I'm really here to talk about where big data went wrong and how to fix it, how we at Comcast are working to fix it. Required slide from the lawyers. Very important. So I'm going to tell you a passionate story of oppression and liberation. So back in the day, we had enterprise data warehouses. They were owned and tightly controlled by DBAs and IT departments. There was one schema and one schema only that you could put data in to a data warehouse. And they controlled even the ETL jobs sometimes. This was oppressive. They were colonial oppressors like King George here. So the cry went round, revolution, power to the people, data democratization. And that was big data's beginning. So they overthrew these colonial oppressors of the EDWs. And now, or then, anyone could write data to the data lake in any schema or no consistent schema. And schemas were only discovered at the time of reading the data. That's what we call schema on read. Previously, it was called schema on write. However, as with many revolutions, there was chaos after this one. And that's basically where we are now. So data representation and expressiveness of the schemas and of the data and self-service have really blossomed. Data discovery, finding data of interest, and integration of data have really suffered. Data gives up none of its secrets until it's actually read. And even after you read it, unless you made it recently, the attribute names will not tell you, will not really give you a hint as to what the data means, at least not all the time. And data duplication is rampant in these lakes. So at Comcast, we want to define a new order. And we're writing a constitution for the new order that will promote the general welfare. Um, the data can be published to the system in any schema. We're keeping that absolutely. But the publisher needs to register the schema with documentation about what it means before, as the data is onboarded. So we call this schemas, plural, on write. How do we do this? I'd love to have an hour just to tell you how we do it. Um, I'll cover four um, uh, methods. One is to document each attribute of the schema on onboarding, as I said. Capture the data lineage as it flows through the system, perhaps being transformed while it's doing so. Capture who did the transformation because you might not like who did the transformation, provide a unified and searchable metadata and schema repository and lineage repository so that people can find data that they're interested in and control this rampant duplication of data. Well, in order to do that, first you have to identify the duplication of data. So to identify duplicate data, uh, we find that the best way to do this is through ML-based uh, data-based ML analysis. And that will also help you find not lineage quite, but putative lineage, uh, semantic equivalences between tables, tables that, sh that share some attributes, but not all. Again, data-based ML is really the way to go, we feel. So we're trying to form a more perfect union. And as in the US Constitution, I'm quoting from the preamble here. Uh, the founders felt that the important thing about forming a more perfect union were uh, two poles. On the left, we have uh, order. That's the first Chief Justice, John Jay. On the right, we have individual creativity and liberty. And these two together ensure the middle, which is domestic tranquility, general welfare, and getting to eat hot, or drink hot chocolate together, which is what these folks are doing. On the big data level, what does this mean? 
Well, we definitely are going to keep schemas in the hands of the people, but we also are going to take back some of what we threw away in the revolution, which is data governance, order. So cataloging and documenting the schemas and lineage and controlling this rampant data duplication. So ultimately, what this, what this enables is we can discover and integrate data across silos. We can trace the data's journey through the, the enterprise. Uh, ultimately, data scientists can find data, use the data across silos to make um, insights that will be important to the business and to the customers. And we all get to eat, drink hot chocolate together. So thank you for listening.